My old right hip has been bothering me for weeks. I think I strained a ligament when I was trying to throw left-handed. But I was determined yesterday to go out and take some wax anyway. And I seem to have done so without damaging myself too much more than I already was. Uh, I'm John Harris, and this is Small Ball Success, the website where we try to make the 19th century great again. Uh, specifically, I wanted to uh, take some shots that I was going to be taking some video from which I would draw some shots to use in my rewrite, my second edition of Metal Ropes, which is how to adapt 19th century, really 20th, dead ball, the dead ball era is the early, early 20th century before Babe Ruth. And we're trying to adopt, to adapt techniques that Cobb and Speaker and Collins and uh, the guys who used to be such great contact hitters and such great on-base guys, even if they didn't play long ball. They, they had special ways of getting on base and advancing runners and playing the game that I think the game today would profit from recovering. So in our website, in these videos, in this enterprise, I'm trying to recover as many of those as I can. And lately I had been operating on the theory although I hadn't been able to get out to test it thanks to my hip. But I, my theory was that I could pull the ball from this uh, Tris Speaker kind of shuffle step that I love so much where I keep the bat pretty close to the body. I could, I could pull it if I kept the hands really in close and if I pulled the top one down and really, as it were, levered down. We call that levering, really pulling down on the handle with the bottom hand. And, um, well, interesting day yesterday. First of all, I want you to see uh, a minute or so of the, uh, the original approach that I would take to hitting in the Drift Speaker style. I do that little shuffle step. Got a little bitty plate there, which is a throwback to 1880. So a real life plate would be a little bigger than that. And uh, I think there's something about the camera, the lens of the camera, maybe makes me look like I'm a little farther away from the plate than I really am, but uh, there's no doubt about it. If that were an actual box that were marked out, if, if I were in the a batter's box and you could see it, I'd be as far away from the plate as I could get. And then I, with my little shuffle step, I close up even more, and I'm, with the bottom hand, I'm pushing the handle out, especially far. Of course, Ty Cobb recommended that guys in a slump should hold the bat farther out. Now, I'm not taking my top hand farther out, though, because I want the bat to be actually fairly parallel. And I'm doing that because I'm going to let the ball get very deep and come at it from the side. And I want the bat to be pretty flat because I want to hit a line drive the other way. And I was amazed at how well I was, how, how well I was able to do that, especially having this long layoff. I mean, it, I guess this is a pretty low maintenance swing if you can be ailing for a month and then just walk out there and the wind was blowing pretty hard too. So I was, I was quite amazed that I was able to uh, land as many of those to the other side as I did. Uh, I kept inside of them really well, and I think just from these eight or ten shots that you'll see, you'll notice the ball's kind of moving around. It, some of them come inside, but I can stay inside and push them the other way. There's one even where the hitting machine wasn't uh, cooperating very well, and I, I thought it was going to come sooner than it did. I, I did a kind of a, a double shuffle. And I've talked about this before, too. You can do that from this shuffle, shuffle step, the Tris Speaker Shuffle. You can, you can throw in a little extra uh, hop if you find that you're coming too early. It's a very, very versatile kind of approach to the ball. But anyway, uh, so I'll just show you these first. Again, this is what I've done before. And this is what I'm trying to work off of to see if there's a way that I can pull the ball instead of just push it.
Okay, now I'm going to show you my attempts to to pull the ball. Uh, doing what I was, as I was saying, I try to almost kind of drape the barrel down a little lower than the handle. I really try to pull down with the handle. And uh, I think the reason that I'm doing that is sort of intuitive. I guess I'm not quite sure why I'm doing it, but I, I did notice that it was working at one point. Uh, a couple of months ago when I was messing around, so I thought I would stick with this, and I built a whole theory around it. I think it does work to some extent in that um, you're not coming from the side of the ball. If you're, if you're doing this, you're coming down on the ball, you're not going to be able to push it from the side. So, of course, you're not going to get very many to go to the off field. Now, uh, as you'll see, the liability of this stroke is that you're not really pulling the ball in the air. Uh, you're not putting backspin on it and lifting it up very much. There were a few strokes where I was able to do that, but those were where I got so far out in front of the ball that I actually finished one-handed. Practically every contact where I get the ball up in the air has a one-handed finish. You have to, have to, obviously, to pull the ball, you have to get to it in front of the plate. So, uh, I'm doing my little hop step, my shuffle step, getting up close to the plate, but I'm not lifting the front foot up much at all. I'm coming down just real quick with it and then lowering the boom on the ball. And for the most part, I'm beating the ball into the ground. Now, that, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you have a situation where you need to hit the ball to the right side to advance the runners or get somebody in from third. You don't really care if it's a ground out. You just need to get it to the right side. And in that case, maybe you want it to get on the ground. But I was doing that consistently. And, and honestly, that was a little disappointing because I would rather have had it carry more, at least you know, get a line drive to the outfield. I was not getting line drives to the outfield. So let me show you what I've got. So I guess that's a wrap. Uh, really, really love that swing for hitting balls the other way. Uh, the theory that I had made about how to pull the ball, uh, keeping the hands closer into the body and especially using the bottom hand, uh, it didn't really, I mean, yeah, I can get ground balls to the other side, but we've been trying to hit low line drives. and. I'm going to have to do more experimentation to figure out what goes on there. It might be that, uh, actually I did a little more experimentation, but my camera malfunctioned. So I, it's just as well, I think, that I don't have that footage because what I was trying out, just off the top of my head, was that wasn't looking too good either. I was, as I stepped into the plate, also stepping back in the box, and I don't think you really ever want to be moving that much around in the box when you're playing hardball. I think you need to be more intent on the pitcher's hand and the ball coming in. I'm afraid you might get hit, especially when you're dancing around close to the plate trying to open up on the ball. So, uh, yeah, let's let's not do that. And I was just hitting wiffle balls. That's uh, it's no joke when it's a hardball. I think probably when I ever get around to trying something new, I'm going to uh, 
just try to take what we what we called in metal ropes um, a false step where I almost kind of dance into the plate and, and take a lunge without even bothering to try to get forward just really take a take a long long lunge into the ball and see if I can get some backspin on it and and hit a low line drive that way but that's that's on the drawing board. We'll have to wait for another day to try that one.